Welcome to the Danny Goldberg Rock and Rolls Hour. In this podcast, Danny shares his longtime connection to the path of the heart, as well as his very engaged life of social activism. If you are interested in supporting Danny's podcast, please go to BeHereNowNetwork.com slash Danny. Hi, this is Danny Goldberg, and this is Rock and Rolls. And today I'm talking to Kurt Anderson. I just finished his new book hours ago. It's called Fantasyland, How America Went Haywire, a 500-year history. Kurt is a novelist, written many books of nonfiction, editor of many magazines, including being one of the editors of Spy Magazine as a particular early nemesis of Donald Trump. Um, Wikipedia says he describes himself as a liberal atheist, but as I read his book, it seemed more like an agnostic to me. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing him on that. Um, I have to say, Kurt, I just love the book. I, I, uh, I, I think it's an incredible history lesson, and it also raises so many important thoughts for, for today. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, read some of the same sources. I quoted some of the same things in my recent book that you did from Tom Wolfe and Paul Goodman, Time Magazine, and Norman Mailer, but you have a much wider panorama. Um, uh, and by the way, let me just say, and perhaps it's not, perhaps it will be the first time that Wikipedia has ever been accused of being inaccurate, but I don't actually think I ever called myself a liberal atheist. I would, <laughs> I, I think, I, I think perhaps I, I may have described myself ironically that way, or I may have copped to it when somebody else did, but I don't, as you say, I, I don't really think of myself as an atheist, uh, and liberal, I guess, but I, again, it's a word I wouldn't particularly apply to myself. Well, one of the things I love about the book is that while you have very strong point of view, you, 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 you also um, reveal yourself as the narrator of this history, and you're nuanced. You're, you, it's not one of these sort of um, militant atheist books. It's a much more right. complicated look at culture. Um, and and uh, I just have to start by, by asking you... Um, how did how did Donald Trump fit into this? You must have started. I know from reading the book that you started it before he yeah. he, he won, and and it, you would have had to for the amount of research involved. But obviously, he's such an incredible example of what you're talking about, and you had this history of covering him long before conventional journalism took him seriously. So, like everything else these days, we need to start with Trump. Yeah. Well, I didn't, as you say. I I I start. I decided. I'd been thinking about this book for, or or some what became this book for years. I started saying, okay, this is my next book in 2013. Started writing in 2014, a year before he announced his candidacy. So it was it was interesting to be to this this history of America that yes ends up with, uh, and here is proof of my theory and everything I've said, Donald Trump. Uh, uh, which, which you know, he, he wasn't even nominated until I had turned in a draft. So it was odd. It, it, it was, uh, it was, I, I, felt, I really, I, I said to my wife, and now I will share with you because I don't mean to say that I'm like the, um, uh, the world's greatest genius of the 20th century, but I did feel like Albert Einstein after the, he, he put out his theory of relativity in where, 1916, and then three years later, there was an eclipse that proved his theory. So I felt a, I felt a little bit like that with Donald Trump. Like, whoa, this is incredible. Um, so uh, yeah, it does it does end with Trump, and and I tried to uh, uh, <laughs> I kept him on the uh, kind of on the down low, and only a couple of times in footnotes uh, uh, as I was making my my journey through the the, the, the centuries of American history. Well, you go through. As early as the Salem witch trials, and uh, you know, uh, I was able to learn from your book the author of Big Rock Candy Mountain. Uh, yes. Which? What's his name again? Uh, Haywood. Uh, he had a he had a a, no, a stage name. Uh, it was, uh, and I'm not thinking of it right now. But cool. Yes. Anyway, but um, and the emergence of movies, the uh, P. T. Barnum, and and so on. But 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 the last two thirds of the book really kind of starts with the '60s and. And and gets and, and gets up to uh, and gets up to here. Um, I, I guess before we talk more about it, 
you've been doing a lot of book promo, so I know you know how to describe the book in a couple of minutes. Could you just give people who are listening kind of the overview of the of of of, of the book? Sure. Even though I have very poor method discipline on doing that, but um, it is. Uh, it, it, I, I really started by going backwards. I said, okay, um, uh, America is, is such an interesting and, and in some ways alarming outlier in the rest of the developed world. How did that happen? How is that so? And how did that happen? And specifically in, in, in what my subject, which is this kind of embrace of the improbable ass. Ah, sorry about that. Hold on. I don't have to answer it, but I, I don't want it on your... Thing. Okay. So in the embrace of the improbable and the untrue and the magical and the fantastical, why why do we uh, go there so much more than the Japanese or the British or the Germans or even the Canadians? And 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 I and I followed the threads back to the 1960s and beyond. And I realized if, uh, I, di I didn't know what a, the, the sort of epic scale of my project before until I started thinking about it. And, and, and really tracing it back to the beginning, partly because much of it is is not the same as our our religiosity, our extreme American Christian Protestant religiosity, but that is definitely a, a major, major strand of it. And, and so um, I, I go back to Protestantism, about which I knew very little. And 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 essentially I'm saying that our our extreme Protestantism, because we were certainly in the case of the Pilgrims and the Puritans, started by this, this religious cult of extreme Protestants who, who set off to a blank new world in order to, uh, create, to have a, a place where they could create their utopia preparing for the end of the world. Um, uh, so the, the, that extreme Protestantism plus the Enlightenment, of course, we were also eventually, as the Enlightenment came, a, a nation of the Enlightenment and of our Enlightenment founders, combined to create this extreme American individualism as well in this great vast area where people could be alone and, and were alone and, and, and dreaming up their own thoughts about the world and their own understandings of reality. That combined with the kind of uh, business free-for-all nature of America, sell anything you want, buyer beware, uh, good products, uh, bad products, uh, fake products, whatever it is, uh, those things. And then, and then once we became the place where, where show business and all of its various exciting fantasies were invented and in which we immersed, uh, if not uniquely, certainly, uh, uh, aggressively as a, as a people, as a country, all of those things combine over several centuries, uh, to, to, to push us sort of off a cliff, I think, in the last half century of, 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 of our, our kind of into a, into a willingness and, and, and propensity for letting our belief in the untrue get out of private spiritual understandings or, uh, or, or things with, or, or, or dressing up in superhero costumes or whatever into consequential areas where it really matters, like uh, how we treat guns or how, whether or not we believe in important science and so forth. Yeah, one of the moral frames you come back a lot in the book is a quote of Thomas Jefferson's um, that that uh, I think he said that people should, you should be free to think and do what you want as long as it doesn't pick my pocket or break my leg. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and so, so you, you make a distinction between ideas that you may disagree with but aren't sort of doing any harm and those that are doing harm and Correct. and 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 what is the mechanism to have a dividing line between those two things in a healthy society because well, that, I, I, no. that's sort of the, the key question is it not it is the key question and 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 again my reading of history is that we had uh the you know like all cultural uh apparatuses uh this Rube Goldberg machine that worked pretty well for for a couple of hundred years of, of doing exactly that of 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 having a, a set of establishments and elites that that kept uh, kept the thing in check in, in this kind of powerful counterpoint dynamic equilibrium between the the um, the experts and the renegades. Uh, 
So, uh, but if I could, if I could just intervene for a minute. The, yeah. So, yeah, there were these forces that kept things in check, but I'm wondering if one of those forces wasn't uh, religion, because, the, the, you know, there's sort of two, like all these other phenomena, there's two sides of religion. There's the side of charlatanism and exploitation of people's naivete and spiritual yearnings. And uh, there's people who make a lot of money from it. There's people who abuse children by, by abusing the power of their uh, uh, clergy and so on. But there's also an ethical uh, code that that religion uh, uh, most of the time asserted, and and th- the decline of religion since the '60s. Uh, I'm wondering if that if that removed one of those one of those aspects of the Rube Goldberg machine that kind of kept things in balance. Well, there are many things in what you just said to unpack. So I'll try to remember them all and unpack them. First of all, uh, th- there's a third thing in addition to it's not just, oh, the charlatans versus ethical, uh, worthy uh, religious people. There's also, in my view, uh, extreme beliefs of a kind that uh, emerged and, and, and formed big, powerful religions nowhere else on earth, like, say, Mormon, the Mormon is the Church of Latter-day Saints and Mormons. But uh, so that's one thing. I mean, it's a, it's a third thing. It's not just bad charlatans, right. deceivers versus... The good, the good people. Um, so uh, there's that. Um, but I agree with you that that one of the 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 establishments that kind of blew up and lost control, or lost control in the case of Protestant uh, Christianity in the '60s, was that the the we, we didn't have a name for what were the dominant churches uh, in the middle of the 20th century. We didn't call them yet until the 60s mainline churches because they were the churches, and right. all the other churches that we now call evangelical or charismatic. Were, t- were small fringe tendencies, and and they then took over, and 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 uh, and and to my mind led to I mean made the most extreme, and 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 implausible and and dubious versions of Christian practice and belief about Jesus returning momentarily and and faith healing and uh, uh, speaking in tongues and all the rest dominant parts of our Christianity uniquely in the world. So, so, and of course it also politically connected with right-wing politics, but that's a somewhat different uh, question than I'm dealing with. So yes, the, 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 the establishments of religion absolutely kept it in check. And, and again, in you, the, the, the religious history and by religious history, I really mean Protestant history of America, because that's what the religious history of America really is. Um, was this 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 checks and balance thing like a nuclear reactor rather than a nuclear explosion where where it was it was fissile and always throwing off new denominations new sects that would mostly uh, calm down and grow and the Methodists were nutty at first and then they became uh, uh, um, more uh, sort of uh, geared toward improving the real world and. And 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 trying to act behave as Christ would have, rather than waiting for the end of the world and and or demonizing uh, bad people. So yes, that was part of it. Is is that is that the 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 the, the various church establishments in in America lost their their ability to 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 keep control? Yeah, it seems to me there were two contradictory trends. One is this growth of. Um, what you would call extreme religion, uh, where, where there's a, a certain level of uh, what you call magical thinking or uh, irrationality that, that that interfered with, you know, functionality, that many of us feel. But at the same time, um, one of the other critics criticisms you have of the societies, your criticism of elites, who who um, who enabled and popularized and mainstreamed some of these ideas, and it seems to me that those elites were mostly driven by wanting to make money and being popular and being cynical, not because they themselves uh, were, were, were buying into a lot of this. And, yeah. and, 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 and I think while there was an increase in religiosity in one part of the society, I do think among elites, there was a decrease of ethics and morality. There was this sort of image of business tycoons of the first half of the 20th century of, of having some notion of civic responsibility and ethics, even while they wanted to have the biggest house 
and and uh, and and uh, the greatest vacation spots and and be art collectors and so on and this sort of uh, uh, Ayn Rand whatever it takes to get as much as you can um, amoral capitalism uh, is incompatible with with any religious uh, belief set so you know on the one hand I mean religion cause some of the problem, but I, I'm wondering if a decline of, you know, yeah. of materialism as a religion. I believe the biggest religion in America is materialism. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't surprise me, Danny. <laughs> uh, um, uh, no, I think, I think the, 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 the main line mid 20th, mid, mid century and, and, and the Protestantism of America for most, for most of its history of the last, of, of the United States history, certainly, was what you're saying had probably a a a net plus ethical effect on on behavior and norms and oh I I sh I, I shouldn't pay myself five hundred times what my average employee is paid I should pay myself thirty times right you know yeah. that kind and, and truly and 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 the, the the Midwest in which I grew up in the sixties I think part of the reason the inequality not only was less but was in its in its in its expressions of giant houses and sports cars and and, and all that was 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 l l apparently less uh, probably partly because of that that old fashioned combination of uh, Protestant restraint Christian ethics and so forth that yes uh, uh, starting in the sixties starting in our beloved sixties. Do your own thing. Also applied to the Ayn, Ayn Randian uh, 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 libertarian. Get as much as I can. Screw the rest of the world. Yeah, I want to give you some space to talk about the late sixties. As you know, I'm a wrote a book uh, about what I thought were the good parts of it. I tried to acknowledge the darkness as well. But uh, a lot of people, I think, who listened to this podcast came of age in the sixties were influenced by some of the countercultural ideas. Sure. And, and you have this notion that, uh, and this may not include everything you want to say about it, but please include this in your answer. The, the idea that part of the counterculture served a, a, as sort of useful idiots, the way that Leninists used it in the communist terms for yeah. the useful idiots that empowered today's right. Um, and I can tell you that, that Ramdas, who's, uh, you, you know, teachings kind of created the con you know the infrastructure for this podcast. When I talked to him for my book, he 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 did say he agrees that mistakes of the '60s helped create the the, the Trump era as well. Really? So, so, wow! So, I'm, I'm, it thrills me. So I would say I I would just tell you I'm I'm extremely uh, yeah. interested in hearing what you have to say about it, and I think people listening need to hear what you have to say about it. So. Have at it. What was wrong with the 60s? Well, I, first of all, uh, you know, I, there was probably no other way to go. There's probably not a correct way to have, uh, to have managed the 60s to avoid uh, its, its part of its uh, tributaries leading to Donald Trump and, and Trumpism. But uh, what, what I mean, uh, one of the things I regret about it, and, and again, as you know, you read the book, I... I, I I loved the '60s as a kid. As a kid, uh, you know, I was I turned uh, 15 in 1969, and it was great. And 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 I, I had no regrets about it at the time, or, or or in my personal life since. Or and 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 let me also stipulate, you know, all of the 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 different ways of understanding reality. Many of them were great and I, and I'm thankful for them and civil rights and feminism and environmentalism. And I'm, I'm a good person, but I, I do think that the, the, what, what blew up then, what I call a big bang, part of the big bang was that this, this relativism about any belief is uh, not to be dismissed. Any belief is acceptable. And um, we can't distinguish between good and bad, superior and inferior ways of understanding the world, that uh, science is not only no better than uh, the magical beliefs of what we used to call primitive people, but in many cases worse and has given us this terrible war and this horrible corporate state and so forth. I think that and, and, and all of its... Well, I didn't think... I don't think the Vietnam War that we thought it was created by scientists. So we did think it was created by Harvard intellectuals because well, it, it was. Yeah. But 
but no, they but weren't I, scientists. They were they were well, uh, so, McGeorge or, Bundy and people like that. You know, but but it was seen as oh look, uh, Robert McNamara and McGeorge Bundy and Herman Kahn using computers based on this brilliant science. That, I, all I'm saying is that 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 the, the the war and the counterculture and let me drop acid more generally, um, I think uh, helped give was one front on which reason and science and Western cerebral approaches to reality got a bad name. And, 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 uh, and, and ultimately, ironically, 50 years later, uh, fed into um, um, all kinds of denial of science and, and alternative facts. I think that's true. Well, I, I think that um, because grownups and people in authority and Harvard degrees thought Vietnam was a good idea. And because they thought that, uh, you know, marijuana should be prosecuted with the same vigor as uh, heroin. Yeah. Uh, and that a lot of people in the mainstream uh, religious arena uh, were so repressive about sexual behavior. I do think that that there was a, a, a tendency to therefore assume all authority was wrong about everything. Um, but because they were wrong about those things that meant quite a lot to us as as right. te as teenagers, I, I I think that was a problem. You know that that the unintended consequences of of uh, you know criticizing the New York Times because of their mistakes right. then then weakened them. In, in, you know, in a, in a, in a, in a well, Trump situation, and, 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 and I think again the the kind of anti-establishment impulse, the the super skeptical impulse that had such a flowering uh, in in the nineteen sixties and early seventies, much to the good, obviously. On the one hand, as I talk about in this long history, comes out of this this set of of, of really hardwired American impulses from the beginning. Uh, of which the 60s were were an extreme and and relatively recent uh, flowering. Um, so there's that. But I, but I think again, it, it's it's as in so many things. It's a question of of moderation. Yeah, I... skepticism is great. But and 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 I don't believe the authorities great. But not as a as a kind of uh, Tourette's like reflexive uh, compulsion. You know. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. Um, now. You talk about science a lot, and I, I'm a believer uh, that uh, in science that actually is science. Uh, you know, I, I vaccinated my children. I just took some antibiotics this morning. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I uh, you know, believe that humans create the, the, a lot of the contributions to global warming. And in general, I, I, I think that it's insane to uh, uh, have wishful thinking or magical thinking try to replace provable proven facts. But I also think that part of what, what creates the skepticism is that there are people who then use scientific jargon and uh, degrees associated with it to try to scientize things that are really less certain. And I think particularly of the field of, say, psychology, where, where I think is, is sort of a more imprecise field than, uh, you know, oncology. Right. No, uh, I think that's 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 I, I don't disagree with that at all. And, 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 and it's, it's been the burden of of the uh, of, of the various social sciences and less hard sciences uh, of, of the of, since World War Two to to figure out uh, to what degree they are or aren't uh, conventional sciences. Now, one of the things you don't deal too much with is the effect of, of political um, decisions on this nightmare that you you know fantasy land but but you know the the uh, fairness doctrine i i love that you wrote about the the um rise of rush limbaugh in the wake of the end of the fairness doctrine the fairness doctrine was this uh law for decades that said there had to be a, a time equal time for opposing points of view and uh ronald reagan's administration eliminated that um I, I admit there were some civil libertarians who who agreed with the elimination of it, and I know I know Norman Lear has said that he regrets <laughs> being one of them. But but the point is that was a political decision made by kind of a you know a libertarian side of Reaganism that then had this effect. Similarly, um, getting rid of the uh, uh, 
uh, New Deal restraints on the behavior of financial institutions, uh, uh, you know, uh, had had measurable damages. Um, uh, Sorry about that. Okay, you're you're listen. You've got a hot new book out. You're popular, <laughs> po popular fellow. I'm glad I'm getting you for these few minutes. Um, so so what what about the role of 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 political decisions in this? There's something kind of boring about politics. A lot of us are a little exhausted with the same argument cycle after cycle. And I know you've had no. Uh, I know you know you you were involved with a fundraiser for Hillary Clinton. You've never been shy about making preferences. But but I, 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 I you know, I, I don't see how you can eliminate the consequence of political decisions, uh, especially since Reagan, on some of the dilemma that we face today. Well, certainly, as you say, the, the, the right uh, uh, were the was the force that got rid of the fairness doctrine in 1987. As I also say, a decade later, it would have been moved anyway because of the Internet. Um, so I. I uh, so yes, political decisions have a have a role in this, but I don't. Again, again, the book I'm writing is not about the dispositive role of political decisions, but about other, essentially, everything but that kind of cultural, economic, yeah, right. and other roles. Uh, so no, I think that's true. I I, I think, but I guess partly. Uh, uh, I mean, the scope of my the focus of my book is the focus of my book, but also I think once. Uh, I, I leave it to others. Uh, although, of course, I, as as you know, I, I, I don't say, oh, both sides are blame. I, I do, but I say that in terms of breaking my leg and your leg and picking our pockets and and being a, a danger to society, that 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 it, it's a it is right now very hugely disproportionately a a a problem of the right, the the, the fantasy yeah. facts that I'm talking about. But I didn't want to make it. Oh, you know that. And by the way, it was all courtesy of the Republicans that were fantasy land. Right. It's right. significantly so, but but you know it it preceded them and and is importantly outside of the right and Republicans and everything else. And partly, just honestly, that, that's well, it's it's the it's the focus of my book is not so much that. And being the child of completely sane Republicans, uh, I I. Grew. I. I now am in a position of like. Wait. I understand that there was a. There was a history that many people literally don't remember before around 1980, where where where, to be a Republican did not mean you were a crazy person or or enabling uh, <laughs> falsehoods uh, every day of your of your life. Oh, absolutely, so, absolutely. There, there's. Uh, and and uh, you know, obviously, in the in the 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 deep South, which is part of. What role do, does the does the Civil War and uh, uh, play in all of this, and 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 the Deep South and and the racial history of, of, of all of that? It it, it 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 seems like the South is just part of this mess. Yeah, it is. And I, when when I set out writing this, uh, you know, mapping uh, what this history was going to be, I, I I I probably wouldn't have even had the South and its various myths and fantasies as part of it. I, but again, as you as one writes and you do the research and you think, I realized that this the South was is a big part of, of this history. Um, uh, on the one hand, because uh, it 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 was I mean part of the Southern character, uh, ha, ha, as Southern historians of all eras agree, is this uh, predisposition to to certain kinds of self fictionalizing and. And 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 a glor glorious fantasizing of of life, uh, and then once once uh, slavery looked like it was uh, being challenged, uh, they doubled down on the kind of uh, nostalgic fantasies of of oh this is the last great best uh, civilization on earth, and then once they lost the war, uh, they doubled down again, and, and so so I I think. It, and then in the 1960s, as so many of my things in my story uh, happened, um, the, what, what, what was a kind of Southern idea of, of, oh, our lost cause, we were so good. And then these meddling uh, liberals from the North came and messed it all up. 
instead of being a, a, a peculiarly Southern American idea, which it was until, let's say, the civil rights movement, let's say 1960, became this national white idea, this, this we are beleaguered, besieged people, and, and, and everything's been wrecked. Um, uh, that, uh, so, so it is, it is, it is, a our, our, you know, as everybody says, and as is true, our great national sin of slavery. And then, you know, and then the civil war, and then 150 years later, the, 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 uh, still working that out, uh, is a large part of, 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 uh, of, of the, of the bad fantasies that many Americans, uh, hold. And it, it's it's one of the differentiating cultural facts between the U.S. and the European countries. Absolutely, and between Canada and the United States. Right. Canada, Canada is a re, and, and and again, I, I could have almost written a whole separate book about Canada versus the U.S. Right. Why are they so much saner? Right. Uh, right. Why? Why uh, are they? That's what I want. Well, they're, again, it's a whole. As I say, it's a whole other book. Uh, um, the fact that they they, I mean, I, I, again. I don't know. I, I would only have half-baked uh, speculations at this point since I haven't written that book. Um, you know, it has something to do with um, uh, remaining part of the British Commonwealth and accepting and, and of the of, of of the empire for a while and and accepting that kind of top-down um, rule more than Americans did. It has probably no doubt something to do with. Uh, the, it's it's it, that it was not as a large part of its economy was not slave based. I'm sure there are many other things, um, but yeah, the, the, it is it's a it's a it's a it's I it's an amazing natural experiment of these people, yeah. you know, right next to each other, watching the same stuff, speaking the same exactly the same language, uh, but really more and more a, a very different uh, people. Yeah. Um... Look, this this podcast is part of something called the Be Here Now Network, and I'm always into trying to be here now. I, I hate sure. uh, I hate dwelling in in uh, other moments because this is kind of all we all we have, and I, I believe that. On the other hand, in terms of so, this Trump era, uh, I have so many conversations with people uh, that are convinced that this is just absolutely the worst time ever. And and it, it, there's sort of a, a present tense exceptionalism. Nothing has ever no one has ever suffered the way we're suffering right. with this with this president. And that's just not true. I mean, obviously, you can't say that to an African-American since they you, you know, there was slavery and segregation. And, right. and, and you can't really say it to women who couldn't vote till 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 the 20s. And, um, uh, you, you know, I. I um, and you can't say it to people in tech and you can't say it. You can't say it to. Most people, in my view. Yeah. So, so, what, what do you make of? I, I'm wondering if if there's something. And again, I can't stand Trump, and I I, uh, I uh, support anybody, whether it's Planned Parenthood, the ACLU, or anybody else that's trying to do anything to try to uh, um, stop his darkest uh, impulses. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I have no quarrel with any of that. But, but there, I, I the, the the level of the uh, uh, hysteria and the way that that talking about him seems to just take up so much more oxygen than than uh, uh, than other presidents. And we've had yeah. some, you know, Reagan took up a lot of oxygen. Vietnam took up a lot of oxygen. I mean, I hated the Iraq war and was very embarrassed that George W. Bush was the president. But this this is a whole other level. I mean, you can't get through a, a, any meal without Trump being one third of the conversation. Yeah. Um, I, I, does that what, what do you make of that? Is that is that is that reality or is that part of the fantasy? No, well, uh, uh, it is all fantasy. Uh, Danny. <laughs> no, uh, I, what I what I what I think it's a function of actually, and and I would because I have this book that I've been immersed in for years. I I think that people you're at dinner with and that I'm at dinner with and myself and uh, I, I think and, and and many 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 millions of people. Beyond the, the the specific, oh Neil Gorsuch, he's bad, or or again the things that uh, a, a a Republican administration that we mostly disagree with does that oh that's no worse than what Reagan did or uh, there's that aspect, but he's but he's not just he's not you know it would be if Mike Pence were president we right. wouldn't be talking about Mike Cor Pence exactly time. right and he so, would have all no, the same policies right right and so we're talking about Donald Trump we're obsessed with Donald Trump we can't stop thinking about it because of what I'm because of the fantasy land part, because of this this uh, 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 astonishing 
uh, embrace of, of selective truth, falsehood. It doesn't matter. Whatever I say, it's fake news, fake media, fake polls. Uh, no, this is true. Obama wiretapped me. That's the, the that craziness, that that untetheredness from empirical reality is right. what uh, I wake up every day just doing a spit take about, you know, I mean, more than, oh, uh, he's he's threatening to they're threatening to throw out uh, immigrants. Yeah. Now, OK, so would Mike Pence. You know, uh, it, it's this other thing. It's this it's this. Oh, my God. Reality itself is being challenged every day by this freak. Right. And I think it's it's horrible. But let just just to put in perspective, I mean, Bush and Cheney knowingly lied about weapons of mass destruction, you know, uh, being in, in Iraq to justify the war. So they didn't it, it wasn't sort of this 24 seven Twitter news cycle. But boy, the consequences of that lie so far were far darker than anything Trump has done. That, that's that's. The, the, the consequences of the of the invasion of, of Iraq absolutely are, are are orders of magnitude bigger than anything Trump anything that we know that Trump has done again what yeah. I'm talking no, about no and this, yet I use the word yet we're only seven or eight months into this obviously. well and yeah. and and the, the the bad the bad the bad side of the Iraq War the the horrors of the Iraq, Iraq War and all the dominoes that fell we know they're measurable they're palpable the 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 consequences of what I'm talking about of Oh no, we have alternative facts. Um, it, it, it's going to be harder to know how that redounds 20, 50, 100 years later. You know, it might right. be really terrible. It might not cost tens and hundreds of thousands of lives or trillions of dollars in a direct way that we can measure, like with the Iraq War. But but it could be uh, it, it could be as terrible. And by the way, okay, I'll, I'll I guess Cheney lied probably. I don't know that George W. Bush did. Certainly, they embraced. Uh, gigantic exaggerations in order to, to to wage this war that shouldn't have been waged, but 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 that's that again. Even if Donald Trump's lies and falsehoods and 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 delusions are not yet as consequential, they are more clearly on a daily basis lies and delusions and falsehoods than 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 Cheney or Bush would have ever had the balls to attempt. Well. Point taken. All right, before we finish this, <clears throat> what's the remedy to fantasy land? Um, you know, a lot of what you seem to be saying was a failure of elites. So yeah. what do we want elites to do? Uh, what can you have some things at the in, in the end of the book? We should tell our friends if they're just, you know, quoting something inaccurate, co correct them, whether it's on Facebook or in a conversation in our own day to day life, do what we can do. And I'm all for that. And I think it's 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 wise advice and it's what we actually most of us all we can control. But since you're talking about um, the culture writ large, yeah. um, writ large, whether it's politically, culturally, ethically, spiritually, you know, legally, um, what 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 can be done about it? You know, you talk about these control mechanisms and gaskets and, the you know, that have, huh. as you said, the American id was kept in check by a strong ego and superego. Well, how does one rebuild a strong ego and superego for the society? Well, uh, uh, that's a good question. That's why I'm not, uh, you know, king or God. But um, uh, I, I think, um, uh, for instance, just it, it would be better for just for starters, just in the narrow political sense, if if the next time uh, we had a Republican president, it was somebody like John Kasich rather than Donald Trump. Somebody like almost any of uh, Jeb Bush. I don't care. Uh, a, a guy with whom you would disagree on almost every issue, but yeah, yeah. with whom you agreed about the shape of reality. So right. that would be good. Uh, I, I think, um, uh, and uh, part of my hopefulness, uh, to the degree I have hopefulness, it comes from, oh, I, I think this Trump thing is going to end so badly in so many ways that it could be a corrective right. for, toward what I'm talking about, that, that, that not everybody, he will have his 25% of diehard believe to the very end uh, supporters, but, but that a big consensus majority will say, whoa, that, 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 this is bad. How did we get here? Let's, let's, we're, not that we all have to agree about, oh, we're all going to have single payer health, or oh, we're going to do this. We can bitterly and should bitterly and will bitterly disagree, but let's all go back to where 
where we were agreeing about the basic shape of things. Now, do you you, you don't and can't dismantle, for instance, uh, the the right wing media infrastructure that has been so important in 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 promulgating that alternative reality. No, and you can't recreate centralized media where there's only three no. three networks no. and two big newspapers. No, whether that was good or bad, we can't recreate that. No, we can't. However, well, so again, it's 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 boring, but it's in our own lives. Whether it's t teaching our children well, as I remember a lyric from the 1960s saying, yes, um, um, or, or and, and 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 correcting our idiot brother-in-law when he says whatever crazy thing he says, um, but and and those of us who have any public uh, forum, uh, books, podcasts, movies, TV shows, sort of. Uh, thinking, figuring out your responsibility in this sense, in addition to all the other senses about, oh, you know, diversity and 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 all the other <laughs> progressive ideas we're supposed to all try to uh, 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 embody in the work we do. But really speaking out about this stuff without regard necessarily at the time we're trying to, to get back to reality-based world about left versus right. I mean, I... I, I you know, I find conservatives with whom, again, I, I disagree about most things, but those who are saying, no, you, the, 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 the right has gone crazy in, 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 in repeating and signing off on all these falsehoods and lies, I, I find though that heartening. So there's that. I, I, think, I think there is a, obviously a huge role in, in uh, public education. I, I, I did an event last night with a whole bunch where there were a whole bunch of public school teachers present. And they were very uh, uh, open to and, and, and happy about what I was saying. And, and, and more than one of them said, the problem is in our, in, in, in our profession is when we go to a kid and say, listen, kid, this essay you've written uh, saying X, Y, and Z is insupportable and, and you know, go back and critically think about what you said. The parents are in there the next day uh, <laughs> trying to get them fired. So, so it's a it's a struggle. It's a struggle on every front. But you know, we all we each and all do what we can do. And and, and you know, whether it's it, whether the catastrophe of Trump is so uh, apparent to a lot of people on many fronts, and that causes a ratcheting back, uh, and that this is peak fantasy land. I, I I do have some hope about that. But I think each of us, it's up to each of us to 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 sort of. You know, yes, we all know we're supposed to check our privilege, but check our our magical thinking as well. You know, every most people in most Americans and God knows most people I know say, you know, think without probably having investigated very much that, oh, genetically modified foods are terrible and they're going to kill us and we shouldn't have them. Well, that's not true. And that's that's as not true as as I mean, the science of that is as absolutely clear as the science of climate change. So. So uh, I think we all have to, you know, uh, work harder to 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 not be uh, so squishy and credulous about things, and and uh, and then get back to fighting about, uh, you know, uh, how we should fix things rather than the nature of the things that we do or don't need to fix. And do you? And uh, if you could indulge me for one more question, sure. <clears throat> what is your thought about this idea? that there's a significant portion of our country, whether it's a third or approximately a third, <clears throat> that just feels sort of left out of our world. And that, 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 you know, I remember one of my critiques of the 60s is we divided everybody into heads and straights and straight, yeah. not in a, in a, in a sexual yeah. way, but the people who didn't get high. And that yeah. kind of, and I did it all the time. I really yeah. thought we were all superior, those of us who had taken acid. And, and that was, uh, to me, uh, not a good idea in retrospect, because it, 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 nobody likes to be condescended to. And, and they, they feel left out of the, uh, this glamorous uh, intellectual world. <laughs> and, that, and that they, and that people, I'll hear some Trump supporters say, look, we know he's not going to build a wall. Uh, that's a metaphor. And, and we know that he doesn't mean what he says, but, but you're not hearing him the way we're hearing him. He's just he's just uh, using all of these exaggerations uh, um, in order to show the um, shallowness of the people that we hate, yeah. and 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 that there is something about the um, you know Obama and Clinton sixteen years that left too many people feeling left out psychologically, emotionally, and and as well as as financially, 
and that and that uh, left them open to uh, you know giving this guy the keys to the car. Um, yeah. How how uh, how can sort of those of us in uh, you know blue America, uh, without compromising our sense of reality or our ethics uh, or our val other values, um, uh, you, to, to decrease that amount of alienation that that yeah. I think we do have some responsibility for. We do. And, and, and again, and, and God knows this book of mine has some responsibility because I'm not, I'm not trying to be a good Democrat reaching out to my, my alienated brothers and sisters who live uh, in, in, you know, rural areas and can't find work. I, I'm not. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, well, really, you're a good messenger though. You're, I, you're I'm from their religion. You're and, not, but, you're not Jewish. You're from uh, the, you're from the Midwest. Yeah, and, yeah. And you're a, and you're a skeptic of everybody. You're not just a skeptic of them. So I actually yeah. think you're an unusually good messenger. Well, oh, thank you. But so I, yeah, I think you know we should all try to be l less jerky, uh, and we should all try to um, all, all those things. Uh, and, and, but you know, uh, in terms of as as we've talked about again and again, there has always been this. There has always been. The, the common people hating the elites. Right. I mean, Jefferson's time through uh, uh, the the monkey trial to uh, it, we've always had it now. So so it, it depends what the nature of that. I mean, it. So, again, let's divide the, the people who voted for Trump to give the finger to you and me uh, between those who just wanted to give the finger to you and me. Fine. To, as opposed to those who who really really uh, uh, are willing to uh, believe anything and uh, and 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 say oh yes Sharia law is about to be imposed or whatever nutty thing yeah. that uh, Trump or the next Trump will try to teach them that so I I, I divide I divide the forty six percent of the people who voted for Donald Trump into into you know. At least those two categories, yeah, and yeah. The people just like fuck you, Danny Goldberg and Kurt Anderson. Fine, fine. But the people who also say, and uh, you know, uh, I believe all these nutty things. Uh, that's a different problem, and, and and so those are kind of two problems. And right, right. So I, there's right. nothing I can do to be nicer to or more accepting of the latter. Group. Right, I, right, right. Okay. Well, being less jerky. That's my new motto. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much, Kurt. I urge anyone listening to this to, to read this book. It's it's brilliant. And whether you agree with every sentence in it or not, it's going to expand your awareness and consciousness. And it's beautifully written. Oh, thank you so much, Danny. It was a pleasure talking to you.